report. She is an expert in the subject of the report. She's more expert even than her boss. Even though her boss may be much more experienced, as far as the report content is concerned, she is the expert. She knows more about it than anybody else. And this is where the problem arises. Then you unconsciously, you assume, you make mistakes, you leave out things and your readers get caught halfway. Because you know things and you assume automatically, oh yeah, they, I know they know also. And then the trouble starts. And that's why the gap, because the knowledge gap for that moment, you have lost for zero knowledge about the subject, you have more knowledge. How do you teach them? How do you convey that knowledge without confusing them? So when you swallow half the knowledge, the reader looks at it, how did you get this confusion? And they look at this and they wonder, you know, how do you get this? And this is a common problem because you have so much information you have to prove. You prove too much, your reader cannot follow your conclusion. You overload, they also get drowning. So it's a balancing act. So this is the major problem with reports. So what we are going to do, your knowledge is deep. Your reader's knowledge is basic about the subject of the report. What I'm going to teach you today is what is known as free-form reports. You, all of you guys, most of you have a template for your reports, isn't it? Fill in the blanks. Very easy, fill in the blanks, isn't it? Today, I'm going to teach you free-form reports, how to create a report. Okay, it's going to be a bit of a challenge for some of you, but that is the best way to learn how the pieces fit together. Blank, fill in the blank. Sometimes you don't know what you're filling in the blank, what's the reason for the blank also. A lot of people complain to you, this is our regular work product that works things so hard, you just fill in the blank. But at some point, you don't know why are you filling in the blanks. So this is what this one day is going to be about. And one piece, one morning here, any time I use a terminology, it seems a bit confusing, please clarify. Like that company, I was using the word executive summarization, suddenly all blank looks, suddenly blank, oh, we call it synopsis. Because this happens very often. Different companies have different cultures, and the sun and the word, the way I use the word, will be slightly different to understanding. Please clarify, don't just keep quiet. This is a major issue in reports, in fact. Okay, a report is a business document. It is intended to provide a permanent record of an investigation, study, research, information for effective decision making, two main classes. This second class is where you have got your weekly reports, you've got daily reports, isn't it? You fill out reports for your boss, isn't it? You've got daily, you've got weekly, you've got monthly, you've got yearly reports. Those are normally provide information for effective decision making by your management or your upper management. This kind of records, a permanent record of investigation, study, research, something went wrong. Okay, you wrote, say it's breaking, you wrote a report, that's a one off thing. Something went seriously wrong in some of you. had a career fair, you were expecting 10,000 students to turn up, only 5 students turned up. Who? What happened? Say somebody does an investigative report, and of course there will be serious trouble, isn't it? So somebody wrote a report, why, what happened, and blah, blah, blah. That is a permanent record of what happened, so they don't repeat the mistake in the future. You must understand, email, once the meeting is over, the email or memo is somewhere where you can throw it, just keep it for the sake of keeping. But reports are seldom thrown. If the company is around for 40 years, I guarantee you'll find reports for 40 years. If they keep, some companies rarely throw away reports. They kept like a permanent record. Because why people resign 20 years from now, say, before you all set up the Utah campus. Some, were anyone involved with the task force setting up Utah campus? Anyone here? There was a team who went and decided, why did you choose to come by in the first place? Somebody was in a high level team and then scouted different different locations in Asia and finally said, okay, Kampa is the best bet. Or there's a whole, there's a report somewhere in Uta which says why you selected Kampa in the first place. There must have been a reason. So somebody, there must have been a report of a feasibility study carried out. Why not Sinto, for example? Why not Clang? Although I myself Clang, I can't recommend Clang if you sit down. So these things happen, you see. So there's a record, sometimes there's a report, a feasibility study for Kampa as a location for our main campus. I'm sure there's a thick report because of the population and the properties. Then there'll be a whole it's a feasibility study. And then based on that, the management did, okay, looks like this, or they, maybe they compared other places. Did you ever compare any other places before Kampa? Anyone, any, any idea? No idea. I'm sure they must have considered other places. So there's a report to do that. So there was an investigation done to figure out the best place to locate the campus, the main campus. So it's a permanent record. 
20 years from now, there's a new president there, and he'll ask, why did we go and pick in Kampa? There's so much of traffic jam in Kampa, so much of confusion. Let's go back that time and see. The report say that time traffic was very smooth, very cheap. Ooh, it's a historical record. They'll suddenly they refer back to the report. Why did we make that decision? So the whole story is recommended, government in black and white. And the report is a classic example of an asynchronous media. Particularly because the report, after five years, after ten years, maybe the person who wrote it has resigned, no longer in the company, only the report is left. So it must be standalone company. Why did we make this decision? Especially with a lot of money is involved, capex decision, they call it capital expenditure. Why did we spend all this money? Why did you do ten thousand dollars? Why did you spend one million dollars to buy five thousand five hundred 3M projectors? There must be a reason for this. So somebody must justify it. So it's a tool for supporting decision making. Okay. Examples of reports, troubleshooting, Why, 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 what happened? 
oh, the reason why we only had for 20,000 visitors is because we forgot to publicize it in the, in the TV. Okay, let's take it. That's your conclusion, what you discovered. How do we avoid this problem in future? Make sure we come up with a checklist and have to always call the media in. That is a recommendation, it's a call for action. That is known as an analytical report. So the two kinds of reports are qualitatively different, and I'm going to go through the difference between the two later. Conclusion is, this is what the facts show us. That's analytical report, what do we do next? And when you tell people what to do next, you must be prepared to convince them because people ask, why should we follow your suggestion? What's the big deal? You want to prove the value of your suggestion. So your analytical report or your recommendation is like that, it's higher level of thinking. You so it requires to think properly. It's harder to write an analytical report. All right, so the samples all are given, progress, or the only things there. Don't worry, you see that? So informational reports, like your progress report, your weekly report, compliance plan, budget is actually a plan, operating reports, last week what happened, we had 35% absenteeism, this week we have 15% absenteeism, just tell you what's happening. It doesn't, it may give an explanation why it dropped or went down, but it just provides explanation for what happened, this is what happened, and maybe this is why it happened. It doesn't give you suggestion for improvement. That is an informational report. Whereas when you go for an analytical report, it must have both.
even in sec 2 supply, supply A, supply B, 15 pages comparison supply A, and then 15 pages was on that one, supply B, very nice, color charts, tables, cost, everything there. But at the end, there was no recommendation, he didn't say I recommend A because, or recommend B because, he just hangs there like a comparison. That does not meet the requirements of the, what the asked for. He was asked to select, recommend a vendor. He just compared both the left that that's not the job, the job is not complete. So what are you asked to do? If you're both asked to you just find out what and tell me about, compare the two and just tell me what they are about, what their strength and advantage of these common two vendors, stop that as information reporter. But if the boss says, go and recommend one, then you've got to pick a winner and say, I choose this vendor because you're telling them to go and selecting and recommending a cause of action. So it depends where you're coming from. Right. Okay. Let's go through this portion.
two paragraphs for this report, unknown report, you are not seeing the report, you are like a reader, you are trying to figure out whether to read or not. Which of these two paragraphs, first, second, both or none, tell me what's inside this report? Which part tell me what's in the contained in the report? This is the first paragraph, second paragraph. Which one? Sorry? Second paragraph. The second paragraph tells you what's inside the report. This report, the aim of this project are to examine the Kyoto Protocol. The first paragraph is more of a background. It could be just background can be copied and pasted. For example, you tap up the project, the project, university-wide project for this campus, if they want to cut down electricity use by 20% by the end of the year, fine. And they come out with three different task force. This group is charged with reducing electricity use by lights or whatever. This group is tasked to reduce, say, for example, uh, usage of water, for example, so resource may be they only need to reduce, reduce resource usage by 20%. 20% electricity, this one will be water usage, this one will be used like, like photocopier electrical equipment. So the three reports will have the same background because they have to reduce the usage of energy by 20%, for example. But the introduction for each report will be different because this report will talk about we are looking at how to reduce electricity use. This one, how to reduce water usage. This one, how to use photocopy electrical equipment.